What's poppin' Carolina Nation and all my pantherologists? Welcome to yet another edition of Pantherology. Guys, today's video is going to be about the three potential trades that the Carolina Panthers could make for Deshaun Watson. So, pound that like button, pound the subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down below, let me know what you think at the end of the video. And let's just dive into this bad boy. We got a good one for you. So I did a video before and it was basically, could the Panthers do it? Now, now I got a question for you. How could the Panthers land Deshaun Watson? So, you know, earlier these past couple weeks, you know, the rumors were going around that the Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson could request a trade this offseason, as we all know. While the news certainly remains a developing story, Carolina Panthers fans can't help but wonder what it would be like having the Clemson legend in Charlotte. Now, despite having his all-pro wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins traded to the Arizona Cardinals back in March, Watson put up the best season of his professional career in 2020. And he led the league in passing Posting career highs in yards, which was 4,823 yards, and touchdowns he had 33, while throwing just only seven interceptions on more than 500 attempts. Now, in addition to his success through the air, he also tacked on 444 yards on the ground and three more scores. So, the Carolina Panthers, meanwhile, were presented with for the most part, I would say, uh, a very average quarterback play. They obviously elected to move on from Cam Newton and instead of opting to sign Teddy Bridgewater. But while Bridgewater's season numbers were fine, it's worth noting that the Panthers lost eight one-possession games, um, and despite having a chance to win or tie in the final two minutes each time. Now, granted that the rest of the team played a role in those late game opportunities as well. The fact that Bridgewater wasn't able to lead a single game winning drive is a bad look for the veteran and signal caller. Wins in just four games would have secured Carolina in a wild card playoff position. And as a result, now could be the perfect time for the Panthers to scoop up an elite quarterback who can not only take them to the playoffs, but also could make them a contender sooner rather than later. Now, the asking price for Watson will, without a doubt, be a steep amount. But with the Texans not possessing a single 2021 NFL draft pick in the top three rounds this spring, a few early round selections along with a solid player or two could be enough as the Texans appear bound for a rebuild. So... Let's take a look at three possible trade scenarios that could see Watson end up in Carolina. So the trade package number one I came up with and I think that could work is if the Houston Texans do trade Deshaun Watson, it will all be ensured a total rebuild. And if that's the case, Teddy Bridgewater could be the perfect bridge quarterback until the Texans find their new guy. His late game falters wouldn't be an issue during a rebuild, and his contract allows for some flexibility after the 2021 season. But in addition to Bridgewater, the Carolina Panthers would undoubtedly have to include some draft picks as well. So that automatically means that the Number eight overall selection in the April's draft would be sent to Houston as part of any potential package. Now, the Panthers would also hypothetically send their 2022 
first round pick as well and possibly even another mid round pick either this year or next now assuming the Panthers are able to acquire Watson which currently remains nothing more than a speculation he would provide an, an immediate upgrade at that position the dual threat quarterback has grown into one of the most gifted passers in the NFL and is much more mobile than Bridgewater. Add in the fact that Carolina already has DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Christian McCaffrey on offense, and Watson would easily have the best supporting cast of his young career. If offensive coordinator Joe Brady and Curtis Samuel return to the organization then this scenario only becomes more enticing all right so my next trade package number two the trade package number two trading Christian McCaffrey would definitely be a bit more com conversational right as it pertains to the Carolina Panthers fan base but Moving a star for a star could potentially be a more attractive offer for the Houston Texans. Now, McCaffrey's trade value likely wouldn't be as high as it was this la you know, this time last year as a result of missing, you know, 13 games due to injuries. But in the contest he did play, the All-Pro continued to prove that he's the best all-purpose back in the NFL. Now, in only two and a half games, McCaffrey accounted for almost 400 yards of offense and scored six touchdowns. So with that being said, there's no reason to think he won't continue to be the best at his position in 2021 if the player returns at full health. Now, adding McCaffrey would be a huge boost to the Texans on the offensive side of the ball, obviously. And with them getting the Panthers' first pick, they could still end up finding their quarterback of the future. As for Carolina, losing their best player obviously isn't ideal, but they proved in 2020 that you don't have to have an elite running back to find offensive success. I mean, Mike Davis has expressed interest in returning to the Panthers in 2021. And if this trade were to go down, he could be the perfect complement to a high-flying aerial attack. The problem here is, is which possibly could be, is cap space could become an issue here with Teddy Bridgewater and Kawan Short still on the roster. So it's likely that the Panthers would have to move on from at least one to make this deal work. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that Bridgewater could be dealt without Watson coming in and after playing in just five games over the past two seasons, it's looking more and more likely that Short could be released this offseason. Trade package number three. Last but not least. If this trade were to go down, it would be easily the biggest blockbuster in Carolina Panthers history. And in this scenario, head coach Matt Rule would not only get a franchise quarterback in Deshaun Watson, but he would also get one of the NFL's most fearsome pass rushers along with a little bit of draft compensation. At 31 years old, J.J. Watt isn't the player he was earlier in his career. But he's just two years removed from a 16-sack season. Now, Watt didn't have an eye-opening year on the stat sheet in 2020, but was graded the 7th best edge defender in all of football 
by Pro Football Focus. So even still, he doesn't have to be his old self in this scenario because lining up at the other end of the line of scrimmage, the Panthers would have Brian Burns, who is quickly becoming one of the best in the league. Both teams get things they desperately need in this trade. The Texans acquire the bridge, quarterback, and plenty of picks to kickstart their rebuild. As well as a good young linebacker who can play multiple positions. The Panthers secure a true franchise signal caller who cannot only help the team win games, but can reach the playoffs and be real contenders in the near future. But in addition to getting a terrific player as well as mentor and leader in Watt, this scenario is the most unlikely of the three, but largely in part because of the immensity of it. The logistics work though, and each team will come out for the better. Not to mention, it's fun to even think about it, right? So, Carolina doesn't have the draft capital like other teams, like Miami, uh, to do this trade. But if Rule and team owner David Tepper are serious about winning, it could be time that they make a move like this. So, guys, those are my three... Potential trades that the Carolina Panthers could make for Deshaun Watson. So pound that like button, pound the subscribe button. If you haven't already, comment down below. Let me know what you think, guys. Panther Nation, Pantherologists, keep pounding.